This video looks at uh, producing a written report using Google Docs. We're going to look at a problem from uh, Module 10. Here's the problem. We're going to look at the relationship between the weight of a car and the miles per gallon that that car uh, obtains. As is always the rule, when we're writing a written report, we need to have a title which includes uh, what the report is about, who the author is, and the date that the report was produced, and a table of contents. There might be more than one uh, problem here. We're only going to show the one problem. Somehow we need to mung this data. So here we have mung the data. There's the x variable and the y variable. Now if you come back to the problem that we're working, there's a number of pieces to the problem. Step one, they wanted us to, to create a scatter plot. So let's uh, put in the code for doing that. So of course the scatter plot can just be accomplished by plotting x comma y. When we run that, we get this particular plot. There's a number of things that are missing here. It ought to have a title. The uh, x and y axes ought to have a better label on them. It might be nice to actually put the uh, the uh, regression line in here. It seems to have a negative correlation for sure. And it's nice to start a plot at 0, 0 so that it doesn't appear quite so distorted. So let's add some of those features in. You'll remember most of these features, most of these options from Chapter 2. Uh, the main will give a... a uh, title to the uh, plot, the x lab, the x, x label, we'll put a label down here instead of just the x, y label, so on, and the uh, x limit is going to be a vector containing the minimum and the maximum. We want to go from about 0 up to 56, and the y limit I want to go from 0 up to 55 ought to do a good job there. So let's run that script, and we get that result. Now I'd also like to include the regression line there. To find the regression line, R has a powerful function called the linear model. I'm going to save the result of that linear model in to mod. We'll use that later on as well. And we'll use the AB line to produce that uh, regression line. So let's run that. Okay, so there's the best fit line on this data. So let's return to our write-up. So I'm showing my reviewer that we're doing step one, which was to create a scatter plot, and then I'm documenting the things that are happening here. Uh, X is going to be the weight of cars in hundreds of pounds. That's important to notice and that y is going to be the miles per gallon for each car, and we've mung those two vectors. And then here's step one where we're actually plotting that vector in the AB line. Because we've done that, now we want to show that result. So let's go back to uh, our compiler. There's that result. Maybe I can copy that image, and we'll paste the image right there. And if we want to, we might want to resize that. I, for right now, I'm going to leave it at that same size. So the script gets to a point that it has done some output. We'll produce that output so that the reader can, can see it in a natural flow. So step two is to find the regression equation. So we're going to add this new line, mod. Remember, we had saved the linear model in this mod for model. model. And uh, <clears throat> now we're going to print out that particular result. If I run that script, then down here I get the output of that command mod. Okay, so what we've done is told the reader that we're going to add a new line to our script that prints out the linear model. Uh, remember that we had saved the linear model in an object called mod, so when we call mod, in our script, then it prints out this result. 
So there's the y-intercept and there's the slope. So therefore the regression equation is We've answered step two, let's go on to step three. So there's step three. It wants us to, to do three things. In so the miles per gallon, y, is going to be a negative 1.63 times x. 3,800 pounds is 3,800 pounds. Remember, x is being measured in hundreds of pounds, plus the 66.690, and we need to calculate that amount. I think that I could just take that particular uh, equation and copy it. I can copy that and paste that down into the console and just run it there in the console and get that result, which is that amount. So it's about 29.296 miles per gallon. And on a car that weighs 2,000 pounds, the calculation would be... So it's about 45.45 miles per gallon. Which mileage that you calculated do you think is closer to a true mileage and why? Well, let's go back and look here. We've got values running all the way from 20 out to more than 50. Definitely that, uh, that calculation when we were looking at what was it, uh, 3,800, 3,800 is really kind of in the middle of the data, 38,300. So it's definitely an interpolation. Out here at 20, we're out on the very edge. It's almost an extrapolation. That would be one reason that I wouldn't think that it would be accurate. And secondly, look at how much the values are kind of spread out away from these, this regression line. Where over, over here at 38, all the values are kind of snugging right up close to the regression line. So at that point, you need to come up with an explanation of which one you think is most accurate. I think it's this one. And you're going to need to give an explanation why. So rather than give all the wording for everything here, I'm just going to say blah, blah there. And you, when you do it, you need to come up with a good explanation. And the correlation coefficient and the coefficient of determination. So, so let's go to our script. Which is, we, we need to find R, which is just going to simply be the correlation between X and Y. And this is the sample correlation. Okay, and of course we'll want to shout that out so that we can use it. And then R squared, I'm going to call that RR, is going to be just R squared. And that happens to be the coefficient of determination. RR happens to be the coefficient of determination, R squared. And of course we want to shout that out as well. So let's run run that script now and we're getting this piece of information uh, and paste it in here. So the correlation equals a negative um, 0.926149 which is which means that there's a strong negative correlation that the slope of the line is negative and that the points are, are close to the line. The coefficient of determination is 0 0.84753192.
which means that almost 85% of the variation in the miles per gallon is due to the weight of the car. So now let's look at step five. Step five has three parts to it. And then we've got A, B, and C. In step five, we're supposed to do a hypothesis test. A hypothesis test itself has six steps. The first step in the hypothesis test is to state the, the random variables and the parameter. So there's two random variables. One is the X, the weight of cars in 100 pounds, and the second one is Y, the miles per gallon of each car. The parameter that we're trying to understand is the population, pra, uh, is the population correlation. The symbol that we use for that is rho, so we've done the hypothesis test step uh, one. Now we need to, to do the hypothesis step two up through hypothesis step six. Okay, step two in a hypothesis test is to state the null hypothesis, the alternative hypothesis, alpha, and to create a three distribution diagram. So let's put those in here. We're interested in the null hypothesis, which rho is equal to the null hypothesis always has an equal in it. Rho happens to be zero. That means that there is no correlation. We need our alternative hypothesis. Rho is less than zero. How did I know that that was less than zero? See, the question was here, um, uh, test at the 5% level for a negative correlation. Okay, so alpha is uh, 5%. Now I need to put in a, uh, ah, I need a three distribution diagram. Okay, so let's look at the three distribution diagram in this particular setting. We've got two random variables. One is x, which is the weight of cars measured in hundreds of pounds. Uh, and the other one is y, is the miles per gallon for those individual cars. Then we take a sample of n uh, cars. We haven't counted those up yet, but there's some sample with size n. And what we're going to look at is the sample correlation for those samples. Now, we don't know for sure how this distribution is formed. Um, the distribution of the sample uh, correlations, I'm not sure that it's normally distributed. But what we do know is that there is a parameter. Some authors call it uh, T star, which is uh, th this is a statistic calculated on these samples that if you take r times the square root of n minus 2 divided by the square root of 1 minus r squared, it's known that this is distributed as a t-distribution with the degree of freedom equal to n minus 2. Okay, so it's distributed like this. Uh, we happen to know that a t-distribution has a mean of 0. We're going to find our particular t star, which, which is going to be, be negative. No, notice why. Uh, our r, we've already calculated our, our r, and, and it's a negative value. And of course, this n minus 2 is going to be a positive value. So, and of course, that square root is positive. Uh, 1 minus r squared is going to be positive. And so both of these are positive, and this one is negative. So therefore, that result is negative. This is going to be over here, which is not surprising at all. 
and we're looking for a null hypothesis. The research hypothesis was to search it to see if the parameter rho was less than zero. That meant that the null hypothesis was going to be that rho is equal to zero. We want to do that at the alpha is at the 5% level. And so what we're going to be interested in finding is that this area below that T star. Okay, so there's our, there is our three distribution diagram. So insert the three distribution diagram into your report. Step three in a hypothesis test is to check the assumptions. This is really an important issue, but to keep this video short enough, we're going to uh, skip those details. So let's go on to step four, which is to provide an R script uh, with the pertinent, uh, calculating the pertinent details. So let's slide over to our R script. The three distribution diagram helps us see what we need to do in our script we need to find this T star. We're just going to call it T in our script. We, uh, we've already calculated R, so we're in great shape there. We need to know what N is. N is the size of the sample, so we can calculate that by looking at the length of X or of Y. So I've chosen to do the, the length of X. Then we want to then we want to find t, and we've got all the pieces that we need for that. t is just going to be r times the square root of n minus 2 divided by the square root of 1 minus r squared. And let's shout out that t value. That's our test statistic. And, uh, of course, the degree of freedom is, is n minus 2. Now, because this is a lower tail test, and this is a T distribution. Okay, we've got this lower tail test, and this is a T distribution that we're looking at. Then we're going to be able to find this lower tail with the PT of the T star. We're just calling it T in our script. Um, with the degree of freedom of N minus 2. So there's our p-value, and we want to, of course, shout that out. Okay, so this is the bit of the code that we're adding to our, um, in, in step four. So if we run that little chunk of code, we get this output, which we can copy and paste into our report. The length of this video has gotten a little bit over time, so I'm going to... Uh, do uh, compute the 95% prediction interval uh, for the mileage of the car at 3,800 pounds in another video. Okay, but there's the idea. Writing a report. One last comment. You might want to distinguish your code snippets from regular text. You can highlight a code snippet and just press a tab. That would indent them. That's one way to do that. So here I've got a, a little piece of code snippet that's happening there, uh, indented. Um, there's a code snippet being indented. So you can go through your document and, and, I, and help to distinguish where code snippets are and where regular text is.